What's up, YouTubers? I'm Brian Duran with Duran's Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you a deep dive into the Vectric Aspire tool menu. This is going to be part one of a multi-part series. So I hope you get a lot out of this video. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned each week for new videos. Thanks and let's do it now. So we'll start on the menu for the first thing you should do when you start a job and that's your job setup. So you'd create a new document and you got your single sided, your double sided and your rotary. If you have a fourth axis, which my machine doesn't, but that's how you would set up that. And then you got your job size, you got your width, you can either have inches or millimeters, you can switch that out depending on how you work and you got your height your thickness then you got your set to zero position either to the material surface or to the machine bed and then you have your different XY datum positions where you could set it on your machine and you would set it in the middle if you're doing a circular object usually down in the bottom left if you're not and then you have your modeling resolution this is just for doing 3d modeling so you higher the resolution the more accurate your image is going to be but your processing time is going to slow down quite a bit if you go up to the very high and then you got your material settings you can pick the when you're looking at your 3d view you can pick what kind of material you're using okay so we're going to move on now and we'll start at the drawing tab so the button beside the create new document would be open an existing docu document and that's obvious enough you can open a project you've already worked on and you got your save button to save your project you can also do that up in the menu file menu and then your next tab would be your import a vector so this is if you already created a vector file SVG or a Adobe Illustrator file and you want to directly work on that you would find your file so you got a bunch here that I've already created you just click on it and your file will be ready to carve or at least edit and you can work on that almost immediately you can see you could go to the v-carve you could do your settings and it would be able to carve right away as long as it's selected so I'll just delete that and we can move on to our next menu item and that is import bitmap file so this is any file that is usable but it's not a vector so just an ordinary file off the internet like a JPEG or a GIF or a BMP file now this file you cannot just immediately carve if you try to it'll say no vectors selected so you'd have to either trace it or you'd have to somehow turn it into a vector file and we'll get into later in the menu on different ways of doing that so now we'll just delete that and we'll go to the next item in the menu and that is set job dimensions and origin so that's just like creating a new file only if you've already got one open you can adjust your setup as you go so the rest of the items on this line are pretty self-explanatory you got your cut copy paste undo and redo so now we'll come to the most important part of the drawing tab and that's the create vectors section you have uh, draw circle we'll start with that so there's a couple different ways that you can draw a circle you can just click your left mouse button at any point you want and that'll be the center of the circle and you can just start dragging until you get 
the size you want. That's one way of doing it. And then once you release your mouse button, you have this circle size. Now if you were to hit your mouse button again, you'd start a new circle. Now we're going to close that out and delete that. And we'll hit the undo and get rid of that circle. And we'll open up again and show you a different way. Okay, now, so you could actually set the X and Y coordinates where you want the circle center point to start. So say you want the center part to be at one by one, and that will give you kind of a quarter circle there because it's going to start the center of the circle one inch up and one inch over. That could be useful for some situations. Now you could also set the radius of the or diameter of the circle when you do it this way. Now if you wanted to start in the center of the document, you would hit half of the dimensions, 6 by 6, because it's a 12 by 12 document. And the radius that you set is going to be the size of the circle. And it's exactly centered. If you wanted to change that radius, you can pick a new number, hit create, and you just created a new circle. Still in the center. And the possibilities for that are almost endless. So we'll just get rid of those by undoing. And we'll go to the oval or draw ellipse tool. This is similar to the circle. You got your anchor point where you want to start. It's a little different than the circle tool. And you can set your X and Y dimensions again where you want it to set. And you can hit create. You can also adjust the width and the height of the ellipse. Okay, so we're going to do the rectangle tool now. So we'll just click on the rectangle. And now if you just want to freehand draw it, you can just click and drag, and that gives you a rectangle. Click and drag, there's your rectangle. Okay, so you can control Z to undo that. Now, say you want to create a specific rectangle size and position. So you could click your anchor point and that's where the rectangle is going to be created from. So you want to click in the center and you want to do from the middle of the document, which you can see here is five by five on the X and Y or you can set it manually here. Then you have your size and width. So let's make it size of the document. So we'll make it 10 by 10. Hit create. And now that's gonna give you a rectangle or square going around the whole document. So that's useful if you want to create a boundary around your carve. So now you can select that and delete it. All right, so another type of rectangle or square you'd want to make uh, is a rounded corner. So that was a square corner. Now you can set the radius of the external radius or the internal. So if you want it indented or you want it just to be rounded and then you can set your radius size. So let's set it at two, hit create. And we've created around the entire document, but we've got rounded corners. Now you can change your size, hit create. Now you got a rounded square right in the center of your document because you started at the X and the Y of 5.5 by 5. So if you were to change that, you could put it in a different position. 
So let's go back to the square. We will delete all those. Okay, so say you want to make a specific size square or rectangle. So you could set your anchor point to the bottom left, so it's gonna go up and out to the right. So say we want it to be in the top right-hand corner. So we'd have the five by five, which this would be our start point right here. And the width would be five by five. So half the document, half up. And we have a square and we hit create. And there we go. We have this square in the top corner. Now say we wanted to switch it to the bottom corner. So you would just start it at the other side, anchor point and create. So now you got two squares exactly diagonal to each other. So there's lots of different variations of this. You got your rounded rectangle. Now you've created another document there and we can undo that, undo those. And you got your inner, inner rounded, so indented. And obviously you can set your radius so you can set it at eight, hit create, and now you've got kind of a cool sign or something like that that you can make. So undo that. All right, so let's say we want to start right down on the bottom, just do a half square. So we could do start point, you just click on the document and that tells you where it is. So that would be Y0, X5. So Y we'd set to zero, X to five, set your width. And now you have just the square there. Now obviously the only thing that's gonna carve would be what's in the white document size there. Okay, so now let's say we wanted a square on each side like that then we just have to know where our start point is. So say we wanted to start here, so we do 0x, y, 5. Great. And do it again. We wanted the start point to be here, so x, 5, y, 10. Great. Now we want the start point to be here, so X10, Y5. Great. Now we have four, almost looks like an open box. So you can see the possibilities are endless for that. So we want to make another box in the middle of five by five. We would do Width five, height five, create. Now that's created another box in the middle. You can see it highlighted there. So now we have five boxes created, or five, uh, five squares created rather. And you click on them all and you can see them. So that can be a very useful way of creating shapes. Okay, so that's the end of part one of this tutorial series. Stay tuned for part two where we'll continue the menus of Vectric software. If you like these videos, make sure to hit like and subscribe and hit the bell notification. I'll have new videos every week on everything related to CNC and woodworking. Thanks and we'll see you next time.